In lessons 10 and 11, we looked at the for loop, which is a structure that allows us to implement repetition in Visual Basic. For loops are used when we know in advance or when we can work out exactly how many repetitions are required. If we don't know the number of repetitions in advance, we use a different structure called a do loop. In this lesson, we will look at two types of do loop, the do while loop and the do until loop. A do while loop will repeat a set of instructions while or as long as a certain condition is true. And a do until loop will repeat a set of instructions until a condition becomes true. In our example, we will write some code which will read an integer value from a text box and will continue to display this value and increase it by 5 as long as the value is less than 20. We'll use a do loop in this case as we don't know the initial value and so don't know how many times the loop displaying the value and incrementing it will need to execute. First of all, let's see what happens when the program executes. We'll try an initial value of 12. And when we click the button, the values 12 and 17 are displayed, followed by a message indicating that the loop has finished. Now let's have a look at the code to do this. We'll begin by looking at the structure of a do while loop. The loop begins with do while followed by the condition. If the condition is true, the code inside the loop will be executed. And the loop continues to execute as long as the condition remains true. Once the condition becomes false, the loop is terminated and any code immediately after the loop is executed. Here's the code to implement the do while loop for our example. We can see that the code in lines 18 and 19 to display the value and increase it by 5 is placed inside the loop structure. And these instructions are to be repeated as long as the value in num is less than 20. So the condition that we check at the beginning of the loop is num less than 20. And when the loop terminates, we output a message to that effect. Now let's try to picture what happens when num is given an initial value of 12, as we did earlier. When the condition is checked at the beginning of the loop, it is true, since num is less than 20. So the body of the loop is executed, displaying 12 and increasing num by 5 to 17. The loop statement returns control to the beginning of the loop, where the condition is checked again. It's still true, as the value stored in num is now 17, which is still less than 20. Once again, the code inside the loop is executed, displaying 17 and increasing num by 5 to 22. When the condition is checked again at the beginning of the loop, it's no longer true, as the value in num is not less than 20, and so the loop terminates, and the next line of code immediately after the loop is executed. So we say that the do while loop continues to execute as long as the condition is true, or if you prefer, while the condition is true. We can achieve the same results with a do until loop. In this case, the loop continues to execute until a specific condition is true. 
the following do until loop will give exactly the same result as the do while loop above. In this case, our loop reads do until num greater than or equal to 20, which means that the code inside the loop will continue to execute until num reaches a value of 20 or more. Once the value stored in num becomes 20 or more, the loop will terminate. If you think about it, this is really equivalent to the while loop above. In the do while loop, the code was executed as long as num was less than 20, and the loop stopped when num reached 20 or more. In the same way, our do until loop will stop again when num reaches 20 or more. You might be wondering then if there's any connection between the conditions for the while loop and the corresponding until loop. And it turns out that these conditions are what we call the negation of each other. This means that they are logical opposites. Let's look briefly at another example to illustrate this. Suppose we want a loop to continue to execute until the value stored in num is minus 1. The until loop will begin do until num equals minus 1. And the corresponding do while loop will begin do while num is not equal to minus 1. And if we look at the two conditions, we'll see that they are the negation or the logical opposites of each other. The first condition, num equals minus 1, and in the second condition, num is not equals minus 1. In the do loops we've looked at so far, we've checked the condition at the beginning of the loop to decide whether to enter the loop and execute the code to be repeated. We can also have our do loops check the condition at the end of the loop as follows. The difference between this approach and the earlier one is that by not checking the condition until the end of the loop, the code inside the loop is guaranteed to be executed at least once, as it is executed before the condition is checked. However, when we check the condition at the beginning of the loop, this may result in the code inside not being executed at all, as it's possible that the condition may be false initially. Let's look at the difference between these two loops by giving num an initial value of 25. If we had checked the condition at the beginning of the loop, the code inside the loop wouldn't be executed as the condition would be false initially. However, by not checking the condition until the end, the code inside the loop was able to be executed once, displaying num of a value of 25 and then terminating the loop, which wasn't really what we intended. Checking the condition at the end of a loop may be appropriate in certain circumstances, but it's important to be aware of the difference between checking at this point and checking at the beginning. So, do loops are used when we don't know in advance how many repetitions we need. We can use either do while or do until loops, both of which check a condition to decide if the code inside the loop should be executed. And this condition can be checked either at the beginning or the end of the loop.